What's up, everybody? Welcome to Other Space PM, episode three. Yeah. We got the homie Sean Nana with us. I'm we got Jason D. A. I am him. <laughs> I'm, I'm him. I'm the man. I am him. We take a chapter out of who was it, Tyreek Hill, or who's him this year in the NFL? We'll get to that later. Oh, today. in the NFL, Ooh. I know it's Austin Reeves on the Lakers and the Team uh, USA, though. He's walking around like that fool's a beast. <laughs> Yeah, uh, him and uh, who's the other guy? The young buck that that was drafted, Anthony Edwards. Well, oh, I guess yeah. he hasn't just Anthony been drafted Edwards anymore. Just, just killed him with like a, a thirty. So Oof. that was uh, that was cool, man. It's USA nice to see uh, you know a future future Laker <laughs> getting ready for that that Paris Summer Olympics, dog. That's gonna be that's gonna be fun. That's when basketball is fun to watch. Let's let let's take a minute and uh, refocus because we're gonna chop it up a lot tonight. We got a lot to cover, uh, but more so, you know, other space PMs about having fun. This is this is when Sh- uh, Sean and I get to be a little mellow, hang out with the community. We encourage all of you guys out there hanging out to go ahead and comment. You know, throw in whatever you're thinking about as it as it relates to whatever we talk about today but you know we're stoked we're going to be talking about the rec league uh boxes which we'll be revealing on the 24th yeah. uh, i want to touch on friend tech man I, I i'm still curious i'm i'm friend curious i haven't signed up but <laughs> you know curious Ooh. you know i, I don't know <laughs> and then uh i want to i want to i know we got to talk about it man open seas <clears throat> made a statement and then boom Yuga made a statement, and uh, you know oh, yeah. both of those statements are very important. So we're going to talk then, about that and later. And then the apes made a statement, and then uh, you know next weekend we got we got a fuck it Miami. So the mutant party will be going on. I'm going to be out Friday, in Miami fuck it Saturday. Fuck yeah. it Sunday. Fuck it, it's going to be a good time. So super stoked uh, for that event, and looking forward to seeing so many other space community members that'll be out there. Uh, Cause I, I myself will be out there. So, yeah. Yeah. A uh, lots of things that we can talk about, you know, it's nice to, you know, happy Monday to everyone. Happy mutant Monday. Um, debrief the last week and, you know, talk about some of the things that are going on this week. Uh, we're going to be interactive with the chat. This is more of a casual <laughs> kickback live stream uh i know jason you're sipping i'm about to be sipping in a second i might bust out something um we'll see we'll see but i want to take an opportunity to say what's up to the people in the chat you know that rolled up what up benja what up bram what up bastard uh ben just staying up late to hang like i love it i love it got the homies um, got cram in here too. I'm gonna cram. I'll see you in Miami. Uh, I don't think Sean's gonna make it this time around, but uh, you know, excited to see the homies and and whoever's gonna be there. Yeah, I wish I could. I wish I could. You know, I got a few DMs of people saying like, "You need to make this happen," but ah, oh, I wish I could, man. There's yeah, just too yeah. much to hold down with the uh, with the two month old and the twos uh, under two four man. months. Four months. Jesus. Oof. Crazy how fast time goes. Well, Cram can't make it either, dude. So yeah, I know yeah, they're, they're enjoy, dude. A, Are you ready? Are you even I'm, ready? I'm stoked. You know, I'm gonna be staying in uh Winwood, uh staying with uh another ape and an NFT traveler out of Airbnb. It's actually like a three block walk to both parties in either direction for where we're staying. So, you know, it'll it'll be a nice time. I'm 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 excited to talk to a lot of homies and, and see some new faces that I've not met ever before. We have some people flying in from France, some some international yeah. homies coming in just for the weekend. So yeah, stoked, stoked to have some some new friends to uh you know partake in some some uh ape fun together. Let's have a little Ooh, shot. Speaking of ape fun, um dude, so you know what, like we've been trying to with the last few episodes of other space PM, we've been trying to, you know, just make sure we're, we're highlighting some of the, and embarking on some of (laughs) enjoying some of the made by apes products. Um, I know you're sipping on something, but I'm about to be. Also got some ape water. (laughs) You got some ape water? I I keep the ape water on deck to be honest with those deliverables, man. I've been crushing ape water. Dude, check this out, man. Made by apes. We got the 288 gang. I know I've probably shown this on stream, cool. but I'm about to break this open tonight. Don't what do you think? Like, don't break it, bro. Should I? It's, should be- I, should it's I beautifully it done. 
I know. I kind of don't want to. I want to keep it minty fresh, but. I mean, I'm the guy who went to Cuba, uh, bought like six <laughs> bottles of rum and was like, I'll make this last a lifetime. And it was gone in a weekend. So, <laughs> yeah, I you know. know I, I any cigars, they were gone. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I, my mom did find a box of brand new Cuban cigars at home the other day, which I thought, all right, that's pretty cool. Probably ruined because they're not in a humidor, but. Yeah, that's true. All right, so yeah. what is this? Where you you showed us the box? I know oh, it yeah. says two eight eight, but so, like walk walk us through what you're I'm opening just, up. I'm just opening it up right now. Like you got these really nice leather buckles that are, um, you know, I I don't know. They're just like bolted into uh, this wood box with this kind of burned two eight eight on the top right here. Yeah. Does it smell so like rich beautiful. mahogany? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it does. It smells like <laughs> fresh burnt wood. Um, you got the 288 ape, bad teeth ape burned on. Is the that side. an actual burn or is that like a graphic? Yeah. Right? That's cool. And then uh got the 288 right here. I want to see those. And then you those, got this. Uh, I want to see, see those things he used to make that that ape thing, because that's super sick. Shout out to Bad Teeth for this beautiful packaging. Ooh. Oh, watch your fingers. <laughs> yeah, really beautiful. I'm going to pull it out real what, quick. What do we got inside? What's so in the what's box? What's inside is Ooh. vodka. Oh, okay. I and it's would not this have nice guessed. sipping vodka. Are you and a I vodka think, drinker? I'm not. But, okay. but I tried it. And he is making whiskey. Um, yeah. which I'm down. I'm more of a tequila person, but um, you know what? Supporting the 288, yeah. got this nice brush stroke right here, and then on the back. Nice. I mean, the packaging Beautiful. is is definitely, I'd give that a 10 out of 10 on, on Dude. like visual deliverable. Yeah, it almost like looks like a Coda bottle, you know what I'm saying? I dig it. Now, 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 you know, we, he's got a solid a on the first test, which is the visual presentation. Dude. And he hand delivered it to me on oh. the night of the party. Yeah. So delivery, so. that's another a experience. So he's got two out of two right now. Now the part I'm most curious and I'm sure others are, are curious about as well is what is the taste? You know, let, let's, let's get into that. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm excited for you I'm to, about open to that, bust man. it open. Yeah. You know what? Even after I finish this bottle, um, let me see how it's wrapped up. Oh, yeah, I got to tear this off. This is what Even after says. I finish this bottle, like, I'm going to probably refill it with some tequila. <laughs> that makes sense. Can I Can get, I get a... a? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Oh, yeah. yeah, remember, remember, and, 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 you know, cut me off if this story is not the right story, but. Uh, once upon a time in a college life long, long ago, uh, Sean and I used to throw parties. And when we would have, you know, a bottle of vodka, let's say like a nice ass bottle that we wanted for ourselves. And then you'd have the party pop off handle, you know, <laughs> you would switch and and put the good vodka in the pop off oh. bottle put the shit vodka in the nice bottle and then when you go to the party you're sipping on the pop-off but no one wants that but you got the better stuff you know and you got that the was a good strategy key. yeah i remember that was funny dude oh man that's funny no i think what it was was uh <laughs> yeah we, we'd have empty balls of gray goose and just just hey just put the pop off in there <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. oh that was I a see. good pop that's a good pop. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Shout now, out to Ape Water, though. This shit is delicious. Yeah, and you know what? Um, I, I'm i not going to be sipping neat, even though I've had this neat, and it's great. But I got myself nice. yeah. a little cup of you ice so I can just sip on ice. Everyone's uh, got a good preference for how they – like, for me, I like a little soda water in my vodka because it opens it up a little bit. Mm. Well, I'll tell you what. Cheers. Cheers, and cheers my friend. everyone watching at cheers. home. Cheers, everyone. Oh yeah. I can I can do this. Yeah. I can yeah. do this. Straight to the brain. 
No, it's just nice. It's just nice. You know, it's just like nice. yeah, it's so nice. It's, I don't usually sip vodka, but uh honestly, like this could be a sipping vodka. You know yeah. what I mean? So I dig it, man. I dig I it. I mess with it. Well, because let's, it, let's jump it into does it, it, it does kind of have a little spice to it. That's why. So Salud I mean to I want I gotta get I, I said it before. I you know, ETH is low, it's it's bear market times. Uh, and so I definitely need to get some ETH together so I could mint one of these. Check this out real quick. I've got this up on my screen. Let's show it. Shout out to Bad Teeth um, for getting the Made by Apes license for the 288. Oh, right? nice. Too bad. It would have been dope if he got licensed 288. That would have been super sick. I know. I wish there was a way you can request. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But either way, got to give them, uh, you know, kudos even on the visualization. I I've really enjoyed how apes have taken the made by apes license they've gotten and then art, um, you know, applied their own art style to it. And so yeah. that's pretty sick. Congrats, yeah, he, man! With the brush, it's like he's showing the empty ball up here and just swipes the brush uh, next to it. That's cool. Man. The fingers are creepy. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. What's going on? All right. All right. All right. Right. All right. Uh, you know, I'm. I want to talk about. Uh, you know, you're a friend of mine, and I, and and I like friends. I'm friend curious. Let's talk about friend tech. What the, f what okay. the fuck is friend tech, dude? So it, it's all over my timeline. Everyone's telling me that you can make all this money if you post and 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 you go into a chat room or something. And and then I had a. I know had another friend text me the other day. Hey, man. Um, this guy just made like 14 ether in one day. All he did was post. And I'm like, wait, this guy named FaZe Banks? Like he has a crazy following. I don't think I could compete yeah. with that. So let, let's talk about what it is, man. I, I know you had looked at it a little bit. I mean, yeah, I've <laughs> like, it's hard for me to even explain, but you know, I did sign up. Did you sign up? Nah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm definitely, uh very slow when it comes to these sorts of things i want to take my time and and no it's really probably a good it. thing yeah so essentially you have they they used to call them shares and i think they just changed the wording uh yeah it's to today. Keys. keys uh and so what you gotta do is you got you sign up you connect your twitter account um you basically it creates you a wallet uh, uses base so e you either bridge uh, some eth over from uh, your, your wallet over to your base ethereum wallet and or you just uh, transfer it using a code and so uh, i use like the desktop transfer it using metamask real quick and um, the first thing you do is you buy yourself your own share so you i put in like point zero one or something like where it amount amounts to like 16 bucks you know what i mean okay sure and um i ended up uh so you the first share you buy or key you buy is your own and then uh other people can get in on that really low price uh which it'll start off at like zero zero one or something like that and right. whoever purchases a key gets access to a DM, like a private DM for all the people that are holding your key. Okay. And the more people that purchase the key, the price ends up going up. So and like for so, reference, like what I have on the screen, they end up becoming share prices. Yeah. Or key prices now. Key but, prices now. Okay. But yeah, that ends up. So that ends up like with that particular thing is like it showed eight people owning a particular share of that person and they all the right now the utility is they have access to a private chat okay. with all the people that are holding one of those keys and so that's pretty much it <laughs> you know like yeah yeah um i put in 0 0.01 and currently in my wallet i have 0 0.016 <laughs> so i did make a little bit but i just haven't really been purchasing and you know because essentially like jason if you sign up and i'm the first one to buy one of your keys i'm gonna probably get at its lowest price and then what i could do 
is as more and more people buy your keys, Uh the price goes up. And so at any point in time, I could sell it and take profits. Interesting. Interesting. So like if I get it at 0.001 and then like, let's say everyone in this chat right now goes and purchases one of your keys because they think you're going to like more people are going to buy your, your keys. Um, I'll get at zero, zero, one. The next person might get at zero, zero, one, five, you know, and the next person gets at zero, zero, two, you know, it just gradually goes up as more people get it. But then because I bought it at a lower price, if you end up getting like 15 people that holds their keys, I could probably sell it at, you know, 0.01 or 0.1, whatever it might be. Um, So that's pretty much like, (laughs) <laughs> what what I've recognized it to be. Um, but you know what? I just did it. It was like a DGen experiment for me. You yeah. know, I didn't put my phone number in there. Um, I already revoked did you have to give the it- Twitter access. That's what I was going to ask you. And that's what I've seen a lot of. And that, that's what I was hesitant about was the Twitter access, right? Like, yeah. you know, in, in, in this day and age, you do have to be very selective and protective with who you give permissions to and, and what you give permissions to uh, access, right? And so um, I always go slow with this kind of stuff. I want to I wanna read it. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to all the other people I can think of that, that may be, uh, you know, experimenting or, or, or breaking it apart. Because this morning I woke up to... Oh my God! All this information was leaked about you, your username and your your ETH address, and then it was like, well, actually, that's just information that's attached to the blockchain, and people didn't understand that and got a little confused. And it, you know, the the, the Twitter verse especially is is looking to break things down more than lift things up. It seems so. Someone wanted to, you know get that metric let's say for breaking that story about friend tech uh having you mean some nft kind of, now <laughs> you yeah know? well them and and uh, so yeah so that that was one of the reasons i saw there's too much chatter maybe i'll i'll slow my roll and i'm glad i did i might get into it i don't know but that's not that's not yeah. um it's not super important but it it, it, it is is very interesting yeah as a current trending topic i got some invites if you need them um the thing is, like, conceptually, this could this could be really cool, but it is very early. The app doesn't work, like, half of the time, like, for me, right. at least. You know, it's hard to load. I tried to buy one of the homies' uh, shares or, or keys, and, like, it just didn't load for me. So, yeah. you know, I almost – you could tell it's just – it's very, very beta, very early. But when I think about like the protocol that they are building in the back end, um, it can be really interesting. You know, 100%. it has the potential to be, you know, interesting if you were to have like people purchase keys and get access to a chat. If that chat, you know, eventually offered photo, video, other things that you might be able to post in terms of media and content, uh, then, you know, that, that could be uh, something really really cool like people would be incentivized to maybe purchase one of those keys if they knew there was value coming out of the private chats well but and, right and it now it sounds i would say it sounds like content creator access sean is what it sounds like 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 if i buy a key of yours and i get to be in sean's chat room it's because i i've decided i value your content and i want to see what you're going to put into this chat right so i think that's what I'm getting out of it as like an outsider is like, how, who would I select that I buy shares of? Right. Cause they're speculative. I've heard there's already bots just grabbing shares of things. Cause they oh, might 1000, be, you 1000 percent. The first person that like purchased something from me was in like Mandarin characters. or something, ah. And I was like, yo, they were quick and they bought yeah. three shares. And, um, how would someone look you up if, they ended up selling it for a profit, you know. What? But, yeah, like uh, maybe four hours after. So it was, it was like there are bots that are just looking for crazy. new accounts, and they're tying in like, hey, if this Twitter account, like, hey, if if this person is, you can even do like if they're if they're a board ape, you know, and they have a board ape PFP, like you know, when you configure a bot, 
you can be like, okay, if they sign up for this and automatically purchase shares and then what? assuming that other people are going to start doing that and then, you know, be able to just grab the shares as cheap as they come, which is right when you sign up. And so I'm sure they have bots that are just like waiting for accounts to be linked and just re ready to pounce on uh, any of those influencers. You know hear, what I mean? Hear, hear me out. I'm thinking out loud, everyone. I'm thinking out loud. What if, because, because other space FM has all of its own handles, right? Other space FM, we, we've tried to give it its own integrity to stand on its own in terms of socials and stuff. What if, and, and this is ideation out loud. What if other space FM creates their own friend account and whatever revenue we get out of that goes into, you know, operating costs for other space FM, that could be interesting, you know, and then that becomes an alpha chat. Uh, in a sense. And, and I could imagine, let's say it gets to a point with video and content where it's almost like a more direct Patreon in, in a sense where it's like, you know, like we're going to put our cool content in there, uh, maybe 24, 48 hours before we post it everywhere else. Or, you know, there, there's that's interesting. I could I could see how that could become a valuable contributor of, of content and alpha and just fun, yeah. I guess, too. Yeah, I think the best thing, it, if you are going to do it, is just check it out first, you yeah. know, like check it out before you start setting expectations with your followers and, you know, set a promise. You also, you know, it's kind of like that gray area of like, is, is this a security? Uh, it shouldn't be, but if you start expecting, you're putting something in expecting like a, to, for, for the price to go up and, you know, be able to cash out, like, I don't know, like, like it gets really, really weird. So I, I'm just not the expert in all of this. And I'm more of like someone who wants to soak in all the information um, as I as I try it myself. Um, but, you know, it, it's like, it's one of those things like it, I felt very degen uh, just jumping into it. You know, 100 percent. I, you know, and, and I, I had to share this right here. Uh, you buy your first 10 shares, wait for others to buy. Then you rug your friends. What could go wrong? You know, and, and, and just speaking of that, like, you're absolutely right. I saw Ben, uh, the ape with the crown that, you know, is a little controversial at times, had like 50 of his own shares. And, and the next person was like three or four, you know, and, and that's the kind of thought process that I had immediately is like, if you buy a bunch of your own shares, you can oh, manipulate the price of your, yeah, your shares, that's, yeah. that's a dangerous territory to be in. It, it's. I love Web3 for this, right? Because it's innovation, exploration, and, and, and experimentation. It's, it's a lot of, of fun. And I think I only came up with that rhyme because I have a little whiskey in me. So thank you. <laughs> Hud Hudson whiskey. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's something to keep an eye on. I think, you know, a lot of the internet, is, a lot of the timelines talking about it. So, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's nice that we have at least something to – to discuss and talk about. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, something else awesome to discuss and talk about that, that we've been talking about and we're going to continue to talk about is rec league. Um, yeah. Mainly because their whole ecosystem is based around ApeCoin, And uh, we have an affinity and love for the ApeCoin ecosystem here at other space FM uh, as many of you out there also do. And, you know, Sean and I real quick, we're going to, we're going to continue to talk about the rec league thing, but Sean and I spent the afternoon uh, ideating and coming up with a thank uh, thank ape uh, proposal, which other space FM put up today. So, you know, we'll we'll talk about that later because I think that was very exciting. Sean, thank you yeah. uh, for all the effort that we put in that mind meld together. I think could could deliver some valuable content for the community. Um, but we'll get to that in a bit. Are you excited, Sean, to see you minted the rec league boxes the other day? Correct? Did you? Yeah, I got two. Okay, sick. Are you excited for the reveal, which is on August 24th? What's today? 21st? Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Wait, what's the 24th? Like I, I, the, the, the perfect answer would be like, nah, dog, I just bought these. I don't care. It's inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's apparently that's Thursday, yeah. the 24th. Okay. Thursday. All right. Dope. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping that I get a code of legendary box, of course. Yeah, it looks like those are the rarities. So right. I want to get that Yuga, that Yuga legendary. Now, yeah. if you had uh, a coda while you're while you're minting 
this box, you apparently get a rarity boost. And, you know, that will hopefully, hopefully help. Yeah. Um, they did burn the rest of the supply. And so it looks like, you know, total supply right now is 8,990. If I'm not mistaken, okay. 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 at least on OpenSea, it says that's that's how many exist. So under 10,000 of them, which is good. Um, and yeah, I'm curious on like for the people that got a rarity boost, uh, if how many of those will, will actually be Yuga legendaries. I mean, I'll walk you through my experience because you know that day I was heated, bro. I was I was feeling a sort of way. I was irritated. Uh, for anyone, just for a little bit of context, the day of the mint, uh, which wasn't that long ago, uh, was it was 150 ape coin for the majestic boxes. It was 50 boost, uh, 50 ape coin for the booster. I believe there was 25,000 anticipated uh, boxes to to be available, and I want to say like 5,000 booster boxes. Um. Mm. They had a little fumble out of the gate where instead of it going into the queue at line, people were able to access the mint immediately. So 14 people were able to jump in mint. Uh, they went, hold the hold the phone. Rec League said, we got it. We got to reset our bad. We're going to kick everyone out of line. We're going to run it again. And in that moment, um, a lot of people, including myself, uh, I felt like I was definitely one of the, the more irritated people with the situation had a decent place in line to a very late place in line. And while yes, Sean and, and others are absolutely right. That line uh, initially didn't matter because it was irrelevant. That was an accident. Um, but when I got to 10,000, I didn't think I was going to get to mint and I had not anticipated a mint in such a long time. I was, I was like sad, mad, frustrated, and it all just came out as mad, you know? And, it was because I hadn't wanted to mint something for so long. The The possibilities of getting one of these Yuga boxes yeah. was exciting. And I have three codas. I did all the process to, to get, you know, the extra bump, let's say, right? Yeah, KYC. And yeah, did all the things. And then I ended up sending my friend uh, Ao Jaco enough to buy three boxes because he was like, yo, I'm I'm 1,000th in line and you're 10,000th in line. If you don't get it, do you want to at least make sure you get one? And I wanted one of these boxes so badly that I was willing to not get that Yuga, potentially, that rarity. Yeah, I know. You're like, dude, I'm just going to get those even if it doesn't have the rarity boost. Which well, is dope and, and that the homie was like, yo, you know, I could, if you want, I'm like 500 assist. in line. Yeah, yeah like the alley-oop from the community. And that's often what we talk about is that assist and that alley-oop, right? But the rarity... um ratio of that yuga box is so fucking low bro did you see how few there are that even if you have that yuga rarity boost you're not guaranteed to get that yuga box which i think was a little bit of a confusion for people i even thought beginning if i did all that stuff with the codas i'm gonna get one of those yuga boxes because i mint it yeah that's not the case it's a rarity you get a rarity boost you get a rarity boost and we'll have some future mints as well where you'll get a rarity boost one if you're like a mutant and you have a doggo you get a mm -hmm. rarity boost if you have a bayc you'll get a rarity boost so yeah yeah it's uh hopefully we get some yuga ones because yeah. those will have the best parts you know you minted two yuga five. ones correct you said or with I that, minted with two that. with the rarity boost yeah i i did as well so between us uh i i hope at least we get one I know, right? We need to. Uh, Ma I hope mainly because I want to see it. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, um, you'll inside. There's ten different parts. You'll get. Mm. It, let's say you get the Yuga legendary one. Um, you'll get five legendary Yuga. You'll get three legendary parts and two epic parts, and then it just kind of trickles down. So if you were to get an epic, you'll get five epic. Two, three uncommon and then one common right oh i haven't or, seen this mocha verse and rec league you know i i gotta say the one thing i'm excited about is that the day those boxes open there's a tournament the game starts you know what i mean like yeah with the prize that's, that's cool 
with the prize pool and a lot of narrative. They're doing a lot of cl- cross collaborations, which makes me think that Rec League is going to be open for all these sorts of different projects down the line. Yeah, with, they're talking you know, about, you know, in that space they had later on in the day that I heard <clears throat> you, you you pop up on. Um, they said a few things and that guy, uh, what's his name? TK or yeah, you TK. scroll back up. Is it TK? Mm-hmm. The CEO of Enway? Yeah. Yeah. TK. He was dropping alpha. He was just, oh, bro. <laughs> he was probably Let celebrating. Me- he was celebrating the mint, you know, like we got, we finally did it. And he was just dropping alpha in that chat or in that AMA. Um, but I, I love what's to come, you know, and, even with, uh, and I'll share this, you know, there's a few of us that caught on to when he said, like, because we even said it in Other Space FM, we were like, yo, does anyone know how you would be able to tell if one of these majestic boxes have the rarity boost? Because if you look on secondary right now, you can't really tell. They don't have numbers listed. You can actually go through the numbers, but TK was like, well, you know, you could, there is a way if you look at the smart contract and several right. people, you know, shout out Yoshio and shout out Bastard. Bastard hit me up. Yoshio hit me up. Uh, a few people that ended up <clears throat> figuring out as they were looking at like, what were the variances between like the box that you minted and the box that someone else minted? Right. And I'm happy to share what that looks like if you want um so if you're looking at if you're looking at it let me uh can i share my screen yeah yeah go for it go for it absolutely all right so let's say you're looking at the floor and you're on uh you're on open c the floor is 0.13 um which, by the way, is not that bad. It's about thirty bucks under the minting price. Okay, it's thirty under mint. That's that's great. All right, so you take a box, open it up, and over at the bottom under details, you can see that there's actually an ID number. So these are individual ERC seven twenty ones, you know. But what you got to do is you got to go to the transaction. Uh, for when it was minted because it could have changed hands a few times. So you go to the mint transaction and you click on the time right over here. And once you're in uh, Etherscan, there's actually a couple of ways you can check this out. So uh, Basser showed me this one and I'll show you the another way uh, right after. But first we went into more details. And then you have all this information right here. But if you go to decode input data, what you can do is scroll down all the way to the bottom. And if line number four says promoted Boolean false, then that one does not have a rarity boost. If it says true, then it does. The other quick way you might be able to see some of that same data is if you go to logs and you scroll all the way to the bottom and you see uh, promoted false. Now, what would be the value of someone looking this sort of information up or or being aware of it? It it would be to either one, see if they did the, uh, you know, attachment of Coda during the Minton process, correct, to see if they got a rarity boost or perhaps if they're sniping on OpenSea and looking for um, maybe an opportunity? Yeah, pretty much. Like, you know, if you're looking on the secondary and you're trying to find out which one of these boxes have a rarity boost, I it's this is not, like, fully proven until these things reveal. So we right. can't guarantee it. You know what I mean? But... One of the what we could say is like one of the things that we've all kind of cross reference with each other as a community has been like, okay, this this seems to be aligning with like if I if you give me the wallet that you minted with uh, in your box or I check that box, then it will likely show up and you know you minted with a coda. If I do that same thing, it'll it'll probably say true. Right. 
Right. I think, you know, for for everyone out there, the reveal of these boxes on, is on August 24th, but I don't know if they've set a specific time, which most of the time they don't do that. Um, that is going to be an opportunity for sniping, uh, potentially a Yuga box or a legendary that someone may have listed on the floor uh, and have no fucking clue or idea. So, you know, shout out to the one at least person out there that I'm I'm sure will be able to snipe something. I'm going to be paying attention on the 24th to to the floor and seeing myself if if anyone fumbles and maybe I could pick up a, a Yuga box because, yes, I myself minted a few, but we're not guaranteed and I still want one. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I yeah. know you do too. I mean, the thing for me is I'm fortunate to have another chance at this. And I'm I'm almost like oh, yeah. D, I'm almost almost DCAing into rec league because it's like if I only had a coda, then this is my shot at taking advantage of the fact that you know I'll get a rarity boost. But sure, oh I see what you're saying. This there's going to be another mint, and right. that next mint where and not only that, like we're still going to be able to claim our coda mech, as right? Well, right, you know, like a full mech, and then. There's going to be another Founders Box Mint for Mutants and BAKC. And if you have a BAKC along with the Mutant, you'll get a rar rarity boost. Right. So there's there's that opportunity there for another Founders Box and another whole shot at this, you know? Right. Um, maybe it's not Founders Box for that, but a Majestic. But... Um, and then same thing for BAYC. So there's already three mints that I qualify for a rarity boost. Right. And the and the board Ape Yacht Club, I, I read something about like it, it already comes with a boost by itself because it's already yeah. such a valuable item. You the Board Ape I mean? Yacht Club will will automatically have a boost, just like the Coda one. I can't wait to fight you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, it's, check it's this gonna out. be fun. I brought <clears throat> this one up. Uh this one is one that I minted with the coda, right? Okay. So if I do the same thing, click four days ago, bam, uh, and then go to logs, go to the bottom, notice it says promoted true. Okay. And all that, that doesn't mean like, oh, oh you wait, have are a you legendary. not seeing it? No. Oh, sorry. Hold it's on. It's okay. But, but, but my point too is just because you see that on there doesn't mean like, oh, this one for sure has a Yuga box. By no mean are we, means are we saying that. What we're saying is that was minted with a coda uh, attached to that wallet and should have that rarity boost, which yeah, may offer this, that opportunity. That Exactly. Like we're not suggesting this. <laughs> we're just showing what, what this information looks like for someone if – like, I know I have a rarity boost on this. If I go to four days ago, this was the mint transaction. I minted two of them. So right. in this transaction, both of these should have it, 5086, 5087. And if I go over to logs up here on the top, scroll all the way to the bottom, 5086, 5087, box type one, promoted true. And nice. so... That's the key right there. Is that true under promoted? Yeah. And I, I think that's going to be interesting to, to especially like I was thinking about it myself. Let's, let's say those three that I minted from the homie and then the two that I minted with Dakota. Luckily, I, I had the foresight to separate them from wallets to avoid this confusion. But let's say they were put in the same wallet. Right now, they all look the same. So that little bit of yeah. info that you guys found is actually quite important if you're trying to separate that kind of info. Uh, yeah, well, dude, thanks to uh, you know the what's his name TJ. Bastard. Oh yeah. No. Well, no, the, TK, the CEO TK. TK. Yo, <laughs> and, and, TK for for letting us know that you know there's a way to look at it. So bro, there it is. Shout out to that whole uh, squad, right at, at Rec League with Justin, you know, being the the community manager. And TK, the CEO, they've been running the spaces uh, tomorrow at boop, 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 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. They will be doing a little rec league behind the creative inspiration. I think it's cool how much narrative they're bringing out with this game. It's not just a game. They're setting up stories simultaneously, you know, and, and I can appreciate that for sure. Um, 
I do want to say what I thought was awesome about that space is was how they acknowledged uh, how vocally loud and frustrated I was. And in that instance, I realized two things. I need to be careful what I tweet because I don't realize how many people see it because I'm all mad and like, this is some bullshit. And, and then I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh, they were, Justin was like, oh, we got to make it right because we saw Baron was mad and I apologized to the team on the spaces. And I was like, yo, I was just excited and I got mad because I really wanted to mint, you know. But uh, I was I was able to ask them on the live stream, like exactly that question was, is there an indicator, you know, to tell if you minted and, and shout out to TK. And then I think T TK and did that's a, when he dropped the alpha. Yeah. And then he started <laughs> saying a little bit more and a little yeah. bit more, a little bit more. Sipping. And I was like, was oh, sipping. shit. So I think Rec League might be like a big fucking deal in the future, man. I mean, don't quote me on that that Jason said they're going to be a big fucking deal, but like uh, it's interesting what they got lined up. The fact that the day the box is open, we get to play in a tournament. Oh, here's a little bit of interesting insight. And I'm just going to say this because I've been sipping. <laughs> so I reached out to rec league and asked them because they said they want to host community tournaments. And I said, yo, we got a community other space FMs right here. We'd love to host. Uh, a rec league other space fm tournament of some variety and he said absolutely a fantastic idea let's get back to that soon so i'm gonna i'm gonna keep working on that and see if we can we can maybe do a rec league slash other space fm community tournament and and yeah. do something they did say that you know we have the ability to to do that and I think that's pretty awesome because it allows the community to kind of get in on these tournaments, host tournaments, uh, potentially get a cut for running them. Um, also, like arenas that we might be able to use, yeah, you know, yeah. like virtual arenas. So it should be, be really cool. cool. Um, but it yeah, man. And, you know, earlier we, we were mentioning like TK, but yeah, also shout out Bastard. Go buy one of his friend. Was it friend links or whatever it's called? Ooh, his keys. <laughs> go get one of his keys and find out what he's up yeah, to yeah, in his room. The pump is the yeah. code. No. Um, you know, I was thinking of that too. Like, yo, anyone want to know how to find, like, uh, if you have a Coda Box rarity, go ahead and uh, purchase one phone. of your, yeah, yeah, get access to the chat. Because, Bro, I'm uh, saying, let's do an Other Space FM one. We're making bread for the community, you know what I mean? And, and then we get more deeds because I can't believe they're at point three. <sighs> Bro. All right, we're not even going to get into that. So actually, before we get into Marketplace and, and you know, where all that's going, this week in in uh, the Web3 community, a lot a lot of important shit actually happened. And and I think this particular was, was one of the most important things that happened was that OpenSea took a stance. And then immediately after, so did Yuga, right? And so um, just to give a little context to it, OpenSea is really focused on eliminating uh, royalties for creators, it seems. And yeah. Yuga stands on the premise that royalties for creators are intensely important. Um, so let's just, let's just read this real quick. Uh, by Daniel Allegre, the CEO of, of Yuga. At Yuga Labs, we are committed to help foster an ecosystem where new and innovative content is created and where creators are rewarded for their work. In light of OpenSea's announcement yesterday that they will be sunsetting the OpenSea operator filter they introduced and moving towards optional creator fees on all secondary sales for all collections by February 2024, Yuga Labs will begin the process of sunsetting support for OpenSea's seaport for all upgradable contracts and any new collections. That is a very important sentence. Any yeah. new collections. Yeah, they're like, right? fuck you. We have more for the Yuga ecosystem is what I took away from that. With the aim of this well, Look being at complete, the Yuga collection volume versus OpenSea's uh, entire volume. You know what open I mean? OpenSea just gonna, signed their own death warrant, them. basically. Absolutely. Uh, so with the aim of this being complete by February 2024, in tandem with the OpenSea approach, for as much as NFTs have been about using truly own uh, as users truly owning their digital assets, they've also been about empowering creators. Yuga believes in protecting creator royalties, so creators are properly compensated for their work. Now, 
let's take an aside. This is a fantastic note. I love it. When we first came into the NFT space, the value proposition that was quite substantially different from crypto was the associated factor of art. It was the associated factor of uh, how do you quantify uh, an affinity, right? So there has been a time where Blur and, and Open Seas, even to a degree, have made it less about that and more about the tokenomics in a sense, right? And, and kind of simplified it to just straight crypto again. That and what you guys are doing right here makes me wonder collectively as a thought, are we heading to the Agora marketplace? Sean, what do you take away? I don't, Sean, what do, I'm having so much fun right now, by the way. Yeah. Sean, tell me more. What do you think? Yeah. No, when, I mean, when Agora. what do you think about this? And when, when do you think the Agora marketplace becomes a reality? Because this was an obvious fuck you to open C. So well, like, dude. What now? It's a huge signal, right? And then the rest of the community kind of got behind it. We're standing with you on this statement. But here's the thing. Like, you know, I think uh, for many of us that kind of was, was really into the space, especially NFTs prior to even Bored Apes, like royalties was, was kind of the key unlock. You know, just besides ownership, just being able to have like a creator royalty, like, made me really rethink the way uh, digital art could be sold. And, you know, even galleries uh, can be dis disrupted uh, just because it's, it's a different way. And you can literally create generational wealth if that artwork was to continue to get sold over periods of generation because the royalties will always collect into that wallet for that token for its life. Right. You know, and so there's some fundamentals there that are very important for NFTs. And um, I think it's it's important to protect with marketplaces like Blur and what OpenSea is doing. Uh, they want to make it completely optional and not enforce some of these contracts to pay those creator fees uh, and just kind of keep finding ways around it so they don't have to pay that creator fee because they think their customers won't. But at the same time, they're going to enforce the 2.5% fucking marketplace fee. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. Like, fuck that. Yeah. You know, uh, I think if, if it was swapped, you know, like enforce the minimum of a 2.5% creator fee and then let's do optional marketplace fees. That could be something I'd be entertained with, but um, other than that, like when you get made this statement, I'm kind of reading in between the lines because if they're going to say they're not going to do that and they're going to not support open C um, for the future contracts, if they decide to go this direction, where are you going to go? Right. Like, do we have a good solution out there right now? Is blur any better than open C? Like, no. And like you said, you know, they've even with Blur, it's kind of taken you, you used to Gino.eth had like a really great thread on this as well. Um, but it's taken a lot of the things that made NFTs great with the JPEG and us being able to look at the traits and anything that was even kind of like a mid, you know, like if it was a cheetah fur, like, hey, you would know there's a cheetah fur uh, floor. You know, but now right. on Blur, it's either Grails or they're all floors. They're all, it doesn't matter what kind of traits they have because at the end of the day, they take away all the beautiful pictures and they, you just see a list of NFTs right. and numbers and prices. And so they just become trading assets. And so, you know, if they're treated that way, then really the, the culture and the essence of what really made NFTs awesome uh, kind of gets lost. So, anyway. Uh, there, there isn't really a solution out there that Yuga is kind of saying, hey, we're going to, you know, focus on Blur Marketplace or whatever it is. The fact that there isn't a solid answer just tells me that this Agora Marketplace is going to be bigger than just the other side. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? You know, I, I heard someone reference uh, a video game and, and, and mind you guys, when this whole other space journey started over a year ago, oftentimes you would hear me say, I'm not a gamer. I'm not a gamer. I can no longer say that sentence. I'm a a hundred percent, a hardcore fucking gamer. You know how I know I am. I've played heavy metal every single day for at least eight hours since it started that, that quantifies a gamer to me. So now when I look at this stuff, I'm like, yeah, I I'm seeing it through a different lens. And I saw someone post out there that they're referencing a particular video game, that there's this, you know, sort of video game marketplace out there and, and I'm butchering the story, but essentially um, this is the prime idea of what a fantastic marketplace would be was this reference of one video game that, that that I'd seen over and over on my Twitter feed. And it made me realize that Yuga has a massive opportunity here because they don't need to reinvent the wheel. They just need to show the wheel to a bunch of people who have never seen the wheel before. And that's kind of what's happening with the Web3 world. And what I mean by that is a lot of the Web3 people like myself, who often said, we're not gamers, we're not gamers, we're not gamers, are now heavily fucking invested in gaming experiences. They're not reinventing the wheel. They're showing us a new construct for ownership and how we can have value for a game. And I find that fascinating, right? Like, as they kind of talk about building their own marketplace, I think to myself, how can we utilize our own marketplace in the future wearables right for our characters in the other side perhaps actually access to our merch in our physical website like is there a where a world where digital and physical exist in the same marketplace that could be pretty amazing yeah man well i, I love the the dreaming aspect of it because that's where we're at you know if this is immediately what came to mind was like, as soon as they posted that, the, you know, there's one marketplace I know Yuga is working on and that's for the other side. And so when you go to the obelisk and you look at the Agora, uh, it says Voyagers come together to buy, sell, barter and trade for what you need or craft new items from raw materials. Let us build, create, and innovate with each other. So a lot of this is tying in from the light paper as well and what you can do in the um, authoring and manufacturing process. Like there's so many different things that you can do to like create your own templates. The templates don't cross resources. Templates can be shared, traded, and sold between voyagers. You know, uh, creating a template uh, doesn't cost any resources that I mentioned. They could be a 3D object that makes noise when a player walks by, right? Uh, a tool to import images into stickers, creating the architectural blueprints for your own personal room or structure, maybe an object that follows people around looking for attention. Um, and we believe Voyagers will come up with a wide variety of useful and fun new templates that other players will enjoy manufacturing with. So... Again, templates don't, these blueprints, and uh, AKA templates, they, they can be shared, traded, or sold between Voyagers, and it doesn't cost any resources to create. So these could be NFTs, right? Um, everything that we're seeing here um, could, could actually tie in to the other side. But imagine if the Agora was not only a place where you can generate your own content for the other side and sell it into the Agora marketplace. Maybe there's a really great interface, you know, that could be other side focused and related to showcase a lot of that stuff. But what if it opened it up to all collections, you know, because anyone can technically make these templates using the ODK, like why not make this available to all collections? Because who knows what collections will have utility in the other side and how they want to put that out. Like we should have the freedom and flexibility of that as creators. And right. so if, if you're able to create your own smart contract and have NFTs on there and they can be bought and sold, why wouldn't the Agora support uh, all of that? And then make a focus and the intention to protect creator fees, like where people would be able to, 
uh, do that. And then get rid of some of the marketplace fees, you know, make that very minimal, right. you know, to offset. Right. Um, I think, I don't know the, the economics behind a lot of that, but um, I could see the Agora being like a marketplace where you would have like a 2D kind of browser experience similar to what marketplaces we see right now in our browser, but also a very experiential experience, like where you can actually walk through the Agora and visit many of the different collections that are in the marketplace. So you can experience these objects. You can experience these NFTs. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, it, it, it could very well be. And the fact that, you know, you have Daniel Allegra, the CEO, kind of taking a stance and putting that signal out there. It, the fact that there aren't any solutions right now that are great solutions just makes me believe that Yuga has something cooking. Well, hundred percent. And, and to see, you know, and, and I'm, I can't stop thinking about that X money. And, and because of that, it puts me in an analytics focused mindset all the time. Look at this post you get put up 1.1 million uh, interactions, uh, you know, in, in less than three days. This has been all over my feed. And, and I think many of you as well, seeing people say either we, we stand with Yuga to some capacity and Yuga we trust, whatever, whatever. But I think really what it is, is seeing that there is a, a major giant out there who's willing to take a stance against another major giant. And, and Sean, you made a reference earlier about how much Yuga – uh, value is brought to the table in terms of tradable marketplace and then how much business open seas does in terms of a tradable marketplace and yuga brings the lion's share they are the punk well no punks aren't, aren't on there because of their own thing right so it's the you it's the board apes the mutants uh the deeds the the decoupled deeds the vessels the codas the i'm i'm sure i'm missing other things the me bits um I'm really positive I'm missing a, a bunch of other stuff because Yuga has become just such a fucking giant and, and I'm all here for it. But that seemed like I'm, I'm very curious how that will affect open sea in terms of just existence, right? Will they have to reshift their purpose and, and their focus or, or will they be able to build without, you know, having this, this giant contributor uh, bringing all this value into their ecosystem? Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a few different things that you can. Uh, this one, this dashboard was created by Sealaunch.xyz, but they were just kind of going through Yuga Labs collections impact on OpenSea and Blur, and uh, you can see like the line, the the higher line right here is is like Yuga Labs with the with the blue, and then yeah. all the other on. Um, Jesus with with the rest so yeah it's uh it's really interesting to kind of see uh yeah. the the impact um with trading with users um with volume so you can see like out of all of these different things like that that takes up a good chunk um but you know what? The other thing that is uh, interesting as well is BAYC. Those are those are all, all on older contracts, so those didn't even have the new Seaport contract where the royalties are enforced. So I also think that even if OpenSea still does decide to do that, like people will still be trading BAYC, BAKC, MAYC on Blur on open sea so that i don't think they'll you know even though there's going to be a narrative to get away from it like they they can still trade on those and there will still be volume for those collections unless sure. they migrate those collections which i don't think they'll migrate and have us burn like our board apes and then put them into a new smart contract i don't think that's that's going to happen 
Uh, but you don't think there, there's a world where maybe they give us a value proposition in order to do it? Or do you think they take a no. page out of the punks, like OTC kind of thing? Because the punks, you no, know, like a, it, a, a, this a punk can be traded on. Providence matters, dude. 100%. Like, but what, what I'm getting at is like, so punks can't be traded on OpenSea. The way the way they're constructed, like that that's not a possibility, right? So let, let's assume maybe they don't burn. But is there a world in which they could do something similar or would they have to burn the contract entirely to do something like that? Yeah, I think they have to just burn the, the entire contract. So mm. if if they want to get away and like really enforce creator royalties, I think the right. key it, in that was future collections. You know, like they're not going to support, they're not going to put like OpenSea in their bio like they had. Um, but and these future collections where they will try and do their best to protect the creator fees, those, uh, they're not going to, yeah, support Seaport, you know? So I think, uh, I think they're, they're working on their own. You know what I mean? That's, that's like the only thing I can think of is like, yo, make your own marketplace, you know? Um, and but if, if the other side ecosystem is intended to be as large as we dream and, and, kind of believe that it could be they do need their own eco their their own marketplace for this ecosystem yeah. and it, it may extend into some like you said earlier sean some new dynamic metaphysical realm that we may never have experienced before maybe it's more experiment ex, uh how did you how did you say experiential ex yeah yeah like to, to to have a marketplace that's it's like the opposite of blur right like right where blur is completely focused on transactions like you can have another, it's like the difference between like ordering something on Amazon and just getting it where you need it, like complete convenience versus like going to an Apple store White and then having service. like a full experience, you know, 100%. not that we would need that for everything. Like I don't need mm -hmm. to go to the Apple store, you know, and have a full experience on toilet paper or anything. Right. So, for some wired headphones. Yeah. Whatever it might be. Uh, so, you know, there's things that would require that, especially things that maybe are harder to wrap your head around understanding the value of something. And so, yeah. like, if I was looking at a new collection and I want to understand, let's say 10 KTF, you know, those are some of the things where you want to see the lore, you want to see all the things that are built out. You might want to experience a few things before you buy it, you know check out the community, get a good take on it. Like what's the artwork like? What are the community members doing? A lot of that could actually be in brand experiences, you know, where you can actually shop uh, with a much richer experience, understanding that whole ecosystem versus just face value. Like what's the price of them, this and that. Right. So give the ability to do both. But I do think like, having a way where it could be more experiential is the way it's going ahead and the other side can enable that. Um, and then also from the convenience of your own home, like you don't yeah. have to be going anywhere for it. So, or checking out, like doing your own research, it, it could really help if it was the research was almost like help, like in, in the marketplace itself, like you can start to see and do a little bit of learning about that project right there you know so yeah and then and then imagine all of this is done in apecoin only i think that's i don't think be it'll be an apecoin only but you know you don't think if they do their own agora marketplace that it would be only apecoin damn i don't know but i think that's that would be interesting or you know maybe okay maybe. Let, hold, on, hold on hold on let's let's take That'd a page really out of the bullish beach. for apecoin let's take but a, let, let's take a like a adopted let let no and you're absolutely right let's let, let's like take a flashback to the og crypto days and many of you guys out there may be familiar with the bnb binance token right maybe you get a discounted rate when marketplace activities if you use apecoin the same way that bnb yeah. token used to operate right yeah where yeah, yeah. yeah you could go there ahead and do go. these trades but go. if you do them in bnb now you have a competitive value rate advantage where you get some actual value prop for doing that i yeah. could see that being more realistic me too i think yeah. having the flexibility you deciding what you want to be able to transact in like between the seller and the buyer like have some multiple things supported, but 
if there is incentive to transact in ape, you know, yeah. and I think gas fees could be that. Yeah. Like if if ape coin transactions happened on a separate layer, right? And you didn't have to worry about gas fees during that transaction. That could be a really great ex- incentive, yeah. but who knows? Um, you know, actually, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off, but that whiskey just mindset ideation got me going. We're like, wow, that BNB value coin prop actually makes a tremendous amount of sense in terms of an ape coin Agora marketplace. Cause you're absolutely right. People need the flexibility to spend whatever they have. You shouldn't, we shouldn't be in a world where you can only spend ape coin in order to interact, but they should encourage some kind of value towards that. So if the value is you get a competitive uh, experience because it's either cheaper or you get more rewards or whatever, 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 um, yeah. that could be an incentive and a very interesting incentive to use ApeCoin. Because that's something, Sean, you and I talk about a lot. And, and I'm going to switch over to ApeCoin real quick is what is the incentive for people to use ApeCoin, right? Like we right. know that we have it. We got it for owning a mutant and a bored ape, and I wish I would have sold it all at twenty-seven dollars a coin. But instead, I was in Vegas trying to meet Des Bryant. But but I did get a, <laughs> out of that experience. I did get a Max Crosby signed jersey. So hopefully someday I can sell that. To Who's offset. Max Crosby? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Genuine question. Oh, you're being serious. Uh, <laughs> I thought that was, uh, he is a DN for the Raiders, an absolute beast. A but, DN? Uh, uh, yeah, a D, <laughs> yeah. Defensive end. Oh, I thought he was a DN. He was a D, DN these nuts in your mouth, bro. <laughs> 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 um, you know, looking back, I, I would have done so many things differently. Uh, <laughs> but here we are. You didn't even meet Des Bryant that night. Bro, that was some bullshit. Dead Brian didn't even show up to his own fucking event. Oh, you're pissed. That's when that's when I when Des Bryant lost his ape, I was like, good. <laughs> no. Oh damn, that's fucked up. Yeah, I mean, not not really, because no one should lose that, but nah. anyways. Um, listen, this has been a fun hang. I, I would continue to hang out with you for hours upon hours. Uh, I want to touch on one thing before we wrap, and it's the thing that's queued up on your screen. I think this is one of the cool. Yeah, I think this is one of the cooler things we've seen out there in a minute. So, a lot of us out there have these uh, board ape track suits that that we absolutely love, and you know we had the ladies of BAYC on our show recently for our very first episode of Dex Tiger is fine, bro. They, they kicked off the series. They even came up with a little bit of assistance, a little alley-oop, if you don't mind, on the naming. Um, but we wanted to take a moment and give a little appreciation for Tiger is Fine for the creative endeavor she posted on kind of reimagining uh, her Adidas tracksuit. If yeah. you don't mind, Sean, let's pull it up. Not at all. You guys got to check this out. So check out Tiger. She's an absolute queen. Um. She wrote this tweet up on the 19th. Sometimes you got to repurpose the old to create something new. I'm sorry, Adidas Originals, but just in need is something more feminine. Stay tuned. Shows a little video of her. Yeah. Oh. Pieces off of this $80. Or this is actually the sleeve, right? On the jacket. So, yeah, this, uh, she ended up posting that, and then she posted this, which is interesting. You get to see, like, some of the pattern. Uh, well, and, 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 and to give a little context to why we think this is cool is because the Board Ape Yacht Club ecosystem has put out majority of very masculine attire. You know, there hasn't been any feminine touch, per se, to to the merch drops, and one of the things that we highlighted and, and appreciated and, and showed some, you know, love and respect for uh, when we had the ladies of BAYC on deck side was their contribution to, you know, the, the board ape yacht club uh, female touch when it comes to clothing per se specifically. So to have tiger uh, create this on her own was super cool because 
this is something I could see a lot of ladies in the club wanting. All right, um, here it is. Look at this. Yeah, that's gonna look Yo. fire. I bet she, I bet she wears that to Hong Kong. Dude. Yo, I, that's I, gonna be FOMO. so fire when she wears that, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's super Yo, sick. What? It, it is, almost looks like a corset or something. This is so fire. Um, very cool. Look at this. Yeah. Like how? What a cool design, too, based on what she had to work with. You know what I so mean? So let, let's like, take a moment right here, Sean, and give you a, a shout out for the, the the phrasing we used to use often. Is this is a permissionless uh, experience, right? And so if you want to create something that doesn't exist, fucking do it. And shout out to Tiger for doing that. Yeah, fucking amazing job, Tiger. Um, look at this, dude. Yeah. Look at this. Was so cool seeing the bespoke corset made from a repurposed Adidas original tracksuit uh, jacket made by the insanely talented Tiger is fine. Couldn't resist drawing Punk's comic Courtney wearing it. Courtney is part of the lore in the uh, in the collaboration, so yeah. that is so cool. And then right, she was says, one of the face the it, four, Tiger. Right? You just hit the jackpot. Damn, look at this. I, I didn't even realize that, Sean. You're absolutely right. She was one of the main staple characters yeah, when that collab came out. That's super cool. Like, man, what a cool just story to see unravel right before our eyes. And that just comes down to Tiger taking initiative. You 100%. know what I mean? And so it, sh it, shout it, out to you, Tiger. It, it is also one of those moments where taking a page out of the 10 KTF, you know, appreciation for community, actively paying attention. You got to appreciate that from from the artists as well. Um, I, yeah. I think it's to be said that we're still early in the sense that a lot of people are still very aware of what others are doing. So create your own, val uh, you know, value. Don't be afraid to put it out there. Uh, Sean, I'm going to share my screen real quick. I love that it continued on to this. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's the hilarity and, and the humor of it right like yeah we Sorry. respect you but we're also having apologies fun. tiger i think wiggle ceo might have stretched your course at beyond repair also <laughs> apologies to everyone who's who has this burnt into their brains <laughs> that's that would make a sick poster <laughs> yo that's funny <laughs> I love Yo, it. I love real this. quick, man. Do you want to talk about uh, some of the Thank Ape stuff? Because we we mm -hmm. took some time on that in both the last Twitter space, but today especially, we, uh, you know, we we had a meeting as we do every Monday, and we decided to knock this out, dude. Talk about taking initiative. We we're like, you know what? We we wanted. We said we wanted to do the Thank Ape uh, kind of thing, which was it's this contest. And uh, it's like a prop house. It's like you don't have to submit through the official ApeCoin DAO and go through the entire like process that could really get drawn out. This is through Thank Ape, which already has the funds allocated, and they're looking to like offer these grants to people uh, who vote uh, on this prop house. And uh, it's public infrastructure. That was provided by the nouns DAO, and the nouns really, really kind of spearheaded this. So, kind of want to show this off. Um, so we have this prop house, and uh, if we look at the Think Ape, let's see here. So they have, let's see, Think Ape. Here we go. So they have five different rounds. They got one for ApeCoin developers, build the future of ApeCoin. So, so there's 2,000.07 ApeCoin, uh, 10 winners, the deadline's in two days, and there's 22 proposals uh, for this. Let me, let me actually just do this. So 22 proposals that were submitted uh, for the developer section. There's ApeCoin designers where you can design the future of ApeCoin, make art, design, or media that stirs the imagination of the ApeCoin community, inspires developers, and creates a real value. Creator outline plans to create a project. So 269 Ape, 25 people. You can create some ApeCoin-inspired art and, you know, potentially 
uh, get that fu- get that artwork funded and commissioned by Thank Ape. Um, there's this one: ApeCoin influencers spreading the ApeCoin worldwide, uh, spreading ApeCoin worldwide, and um, that's actually one that both uh, the on behalf of uh, us and other space FM, we decided to put our own proposal there. Um, and we're, we're going to show you that. And then uh, there's also ApeCoin Futurist, Ape Into the Future. Uh, so this one's kind of like very open. Share your creativity and passion about the ApeCoin ecosystem with the world. Boom. Um, so 420 Ape that you can win by putting in your own idea. There's only 13 proposals in there and 10 people will win. So three people at the moment will not get 420 Ape. You know what I mean? Right. So 428. Um it's pretty yeah, good odds. I, I, I can't I can't really do the math right now, but 428, I'm gonna guess is less like around like less than eight hundred bucks right now. Well, let's just say ApeCoin is at let's I know it's not at two dollars, but if it was at two dollars, that would be eight hundred and forty bucks. So yeah, not bad, not bad. Um and then governance, but uh, we did we decided to go into ApeCoin influencers, and we were looking at some of these as well. Like pretty pretty cool, you know. We, there's Ape Game, Token Wars, uh, compelling interviews and video content. Um, you know, there's uh, I don't know. There's there's a lot of other cool ones, Ape Football, podcast with video on ApeCoin DAO. Um, but we decided to do YouTube video tutorial series on how to participate in ApeCoin DAO. And so we put up this proposal, and the TLDR is create a YouTube video playlist of how to videos on the most common and important actions to participate in ApeCoin DAO. And so, yeah, feel free to check it out, read it, give us feedback. Um, you know, the ApeCoin how-to playlist will include things like how to buy ApeCoin, how to use ApeCoin discourse and get involved with the conversation, how to join the ApeCoin Discord, uh, how to vote on an AIP, how to submit an idea to the ApeCoin DAO, and maybe how to set up a delegated wallet. And so... You know, this would, uh, this is just something that we're just like, you know what, let's do something in the spirit of ApeCoin and see if we can get a grant for it and continue to do the awesome things that we love to do. And I hope you all uh, support us in this endeavor. Um, And if you're, you know, throwing up a proposal, which I think everyone should, you know, if you're thinking about it, let us know so we can support you as well. Yeah, absolutely. uh, Ape holders are eligible to vote. Uh, one ape coin equals one vote. If you have 10 ape coin, you'll get five votes. If you have 100 ape coin, you'll have 10 votes. If you have 1,000 ape coin, 20, 10,000, 40, and then 100,000 ape or above, 80 votes. So this is this is the alpha. If you guys really want to maximize your voting power, is put one ape coin in 100,000 different wallets, and then you have 100,000 votes versus 80. Um, but <laughs> that's just the alpha. So, uh, no, that, that, that would be a fucking nightmare to do actually. And probably not. No, I actually it. like the, this kind of like weighted sys- voting system, uh, compared to the, uh, the way the ApeCoin coin Dow has it right now. Like this is actually interesting to me on how they're doing it like this versus how the ApeCoin coin Dow does it, which is just one ape equals essentially one vote. Yeah. Like, and the more ape you own, the more voting power you have, you know? Sure. So and, get, and, it, and it seems like on a scale, like you max out at a certain voting power. Yeah. So like these have. whales, all the whales and stuff, they get a max of 80 votes. Right. The delegate so wallets. A like, yeah. Mochaverse, um, you know, French ape yacht club journey. There's a lot of these like, larger delegate wallets where there's just a ton of ape, but, you know, instead of just swinging it and just completely taking everyone else out of the race, 
they they're trying this weighted system, which is uh, pretty interesting. So I'm looking forward to this. Uh, prop deadline is in two days, so get your proposal in there if you'd like. And then uh, when this goes up for vote, expect us to kind of push that out, and we really hope to get your support on this so that we can maybe earn a little bit of ape for some of the video content that we're creating because right now, like, we're doing all of this fucking, <laughs> like, just to just to do it. But I think all of us are looking for ways to, like, actually – monetize off of this be able to get paid for some of the for some of the effort that we put into this every single day um but not doing it at the expense of like extracting it from your community that's why we're looking for sponsorships that's 100%. why we're looking for grants like this 100 you know not just yeah. doing like an nft project where we can just <clears throat> you know like like a lot of other things that have happened you know yeah I mean? yeah yeah no and, and 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 just to just to just to touch on that real quick like um one we absolutely would appreciate any support for that proposal uh on the 24th uh secondly sean and i have such an affinity for the other space community and and we absolutely have no desire to not do anything except provide a ton of value and content and we want to ramp up that content production uh for everyone out there because we know you're asking for it but the opposite side of that is it takes time and time costs money. And unfortunately, Sean and I don't have an, uh, an abundance of that. So we absolutely do want to look for sponsorships, opportunities to you know continue to execute at a higher level uh, without extracting any value from the people who are enjoying us. So if you out there actually are running a business and we have any synergies, uh, absolutely reach out to other space FM or either of us out there because we have been looking actively and we'll start to look even more actively uh, for sponsorships that have uh, nice synergies so that we can provide value with any, any company that, that we may uh, yeah. show in the future or product. And besides like monetary kind of like synergies where we can like, Oh, okay. You know, sponsorship alignment, et cetera, yeah. content creators, like if you if you're a content creator and you are interested in creating more content for other space fm or with other space let us know because we have multiple programs that we're starting to align up you know other space pm the one we're all tapped into right now this is kind of a late night live stream but uh you know there's a lot of things that we can do with the boring show and incorporate kind of like a late night programming to type talk show type thing um but deck side which is our podcast interview series that's another uh program that we're we're running we just did an episode with captain trippy talking about unlocking create uh, unleashing creativity uh community creativity with apecoin as well as uh the significance of sub communities uh that we did with tiger and nini from the laser baic and then, of course, we have our live Twitter spaces every single Thursday. Um, but, you know, I think the thing that we're also interested in is, like, we're seeing the cross-community convergence, especially as it relates to Legends of the Mara. And it would be great if we would be able to use other space as a platform, not just, like, for content that we create, but content that other people in the community creates as well. And so right. if you'd be interested, you know, we'd definitely be looking to collaborate with you and see what we could do to help really push that um, to the forefront and make sure people are, are getting the value out of everything that you're creating. So come speak with us. Absolutely love that and, and, and look forward to seeing who, who reaches out because there's so many people in the community. And this is something, Sean, you and I have said oftentimes is that the value that, that we find in other space FM is we've, we've spent the last two years uh, really, you know, showing our love and, and building our brand for the other space, uh, rather for the Yugaverse, right? So now we realize there's a lot of people out there who are trying to either make their name, find an opportunity, or, or just need a little, like, a friendly assistance for, for that, you know, first video. And, and we want to be that for a lot of people out there. So uh, looking forward to that. But... Also, I just want to take a moment and say thank you, Sean, for hanging out. As always, I'm I'm a big fan of, of 
other space PM has become my favorite segment mainly because it's like, this is what we would do anyways. Uh, but now we get to have the interactive homies. So shout out to Justin, yeah. shout out to Raji, Top Shot, all the homies. XO era. Yeah, Damn, XO man. era. Yeah, we got a lot of people that was active in the chat tonight. You know, Benja, Crafter, Bastard. You know, there's uh, probably others that I'm not mentioning. Um, yeah. But A1, you know, Mark, uh, Cram. But Dude, you're this, real. this means a lot, you know. And yeah. Jason, yeah back at you bro like this means a lot to me that we get to do this uh for fun and hopefully add some value to anyone that's tapping in yeah and now it's time to get back to our heavy metal heavy metal forging yeah uh, see oh let, let's let's talk let's talk about that real quick so buying votes right um i want to talk about this for a quick second so you know season one i secured a legendary shout out to the other space community for rallying uh helping me get there i got a lot of alley oops from the community uh, including yourself, Sean. Uh, yeah. Season two, I I fell into just this magical experience where I was able to secure a legendary again. Season three, here we go. It's a little bit more challenging. The 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 game's different now. The people are burnt out. Who's My fucking here? twenty four da, 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 da. points is like eighty votes, <sighs> bro. And so I'm still trying to get my third legendary. And in order to do that, I've had to ask for a little assistance because. You know, I'm, I'm not playing as many heavies as I was in season two. I'm only playing 13 heavies right now, which is still a lot, but it's not enough to get your heavy metal into legendary because you're needing upwards of like 250 votes for top 50, bro. God damn. So I'm going to I'm going to tell you guys real quick my story. Sean, you're welcome to tell yours. And then I think we'll take a wrap. But um, for myself, I, you know, it, it's not that. We we were against selling votes and buying votes. We just didn't want it to be done in the Discord because we didn't want to open up anyone to any misfortunate events, right? And so finding different pathways to buy votes has always been something you and I would tell people like, yeah, we don't promote it here in Discord. We don't really allow it. But if you need, we there's these people that do it, right? And so for myself, uh, I was trading with um, the general from from uh general uh from the seal team nine he and i were trading every day and he was like you know what i'm done trading i'm only selling and i threw out a number and i bought a little bit from him and i went oh shit i need to make top 50 this day i'm gonna reach out to someone else and i thought of it's bermuda and he was able to help me get there uh for one day and now i'm realizing in order to get legendary i need at least one more day so today i reached out to him hey I need 200 votes by tomorrow. How much does that cost? We negotiate it on a price. Boom. Cool. Done. So last I checked right before the stream, I had 115 votes. Have not turned on heavy metal all day. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm not going to lie. I like that. Feels good. But, and, and after this, I still want to make sure I go put all my votes in, which is going to be another three, four hours probably. Oh, shit. But you like, haven't put my votes in yet? I haven't done any votes, man. Today has oh, been an extremely shit. long, busy day. I'm going to be up forging all night. I'm going to need those. <laughs> but, like, you know, I wanted to ask you because you had told me you you had uh, experienced a little bit buying of an experience, but in a different uh, scenario. So walk us through how you found your experience. Yeah, like yourself, you know, like at first I was really trying to play the game um sorry i was actually just looking to see like where i'm at right now with uh my bad i wanted to bring it things. up to see we need heavy metal on the screen <laughs> i need that addiction itch yeah shout man. out to claude ox claude bro on that last scene go back to seasonal where oh uh go just click on the seasonal tab ox claude is that that reaver in third place right here seasonal. that's ox claude oh so, yeah Shout out to OX Claw. Right, I'll see you in game. Miami, homie. Let's go. Cheat again. That's impressive. That's impressive. That's not easy to do. No. So uh yeah, man. I I was struggling. You know, this season was really, really tough. And I think what happened is this is my opinion based on my observations. Last season. I think left a really bad taste in everyone's mouth because people who were gunning for Epic the entire season came down to the last week and a half 
and ended up getting bumped out. Right. And so this season, all the people that were gunning for that higher tier amp maybe have decided to settle for that lower tier one and just sell the rest of their votes. Right. And so I think that's what happened. I think what we we've we're seeing is like the votes have become like much higher to get, but at the same time, you know, you're having way more people that are out there selling votes. And right. so the first thing I did was I needed some help because I was like, look, the formula and what I was working with, like I wasn't working with as many heavies that I'm grinding on. Uh, and I had nine, I have nine right now. And, and that's still not enough for me to get epics on all of my personal heavies. And so, uh, which I have three of. And so, yeah, I decided, I was like, you know what, let me see uh, what the landscape is like. Because, And then I started off with uh, just looking at like what some of the homies uh, that I trusted. And then um, I also complemented that with Other Side Wiki. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with like what other how other side wikis discord is set up but when you verify your assets they have a whole system where you get access to a vote selling channel but also a seller review channel oh, where they okay. have public reviews of people that you can that are selling votes and there's a format or a template where it shows like you know like how many votes what was their response time in votes what was their communication like you know would you recommend them basically and um you get to kind of cross-reference and there was people i even saw people up there that i knew that you know had not so positive reviews and then there's people that had like really good reviews as well um so it was really interesting to kind of see that and um and yeah like when votes are going for like 50 cents a vote you know it was just like oh does it make sense to get like 20 votes for 10 bucks you know what i mean right right <laughs> like, right, right right just to help me get, reach that 24 mark if like for instance if i grind for 60 votes on this heavy right here um like wh how much more would I need to just put me over to that 24 mark? Well, and then it and becomes so a question, Sean, there's too. There's a like, solution. There's a solution out there. I, I think about this often too, when you decide to buy is, is that value that you're adding immediately going to offset the value of that amp down the line? So yeah. that's a decision you have to make as well when you're deciding this is like, is sure. that, you know, a certain amount of points to get to 24 or do I just like maybe not do it three or four times and buy an Epic amp for maybe cheaper later, hopefully, but that's a, that's a risk. Yeah, dude, uh, that's super true, man. Um, and I think that's the thing is like, if I go to my profile and I take a look at my heavies, which by the way, uh, the team, uh, we, we updated the OP EXT, uh, so that it shows in your collection profile so you can see it all in your collection, by the way. So it's nice to get a glance. Um, but yeah, we got, uh, so as you can see here, this one, I got late in season one. And so I was only able to get a rare, but as you can see, I got two epics. Nice. I got three epics in the running for right now for these. So nice. I like to keep them up there. You know what I mean? I'd, I'd really like to keep another epic for the season three. Um, yeah. So if it's like 10 bucks, 20 bucks here and there throughout the season, I might be able to afford that if that's going to contribute toward a greater amp. Um, right. But yeah, you know what? It could be. Uh, that's the thing. A lot of people got got screwed over last season. They bought votes they're paying for votes like $3 plus a vote, you know, and still didn't get 100%. like, they still got pushed out. 
So that's the risk that you're you're taking. You and, know? and that's that's one of the things. It's a calculated risk, and you have to be. Um, I'm I'm gonna butcher this, but you have to be very calculated with how you use buying votes if you choose to do yeah. that. Because when I do it, it's very specific with intent. I'm at a hundred and fortieth overall right now. Sean, will you will you yeah, look I'm at two twenty one? Like, what, how many points do you have for this? Two thirty two. So what is the cutoff in the Discord right now? Let's look at that. Shout out to Other Side Whis Wiki and Frosty. <laughs> other Side Whiskey. <laughs> well, other Side Whiskey. Oh, yo, yo, yo. That's we our brand. I know. Oh, other Side Whiskey. Uh, like to have this bot that we have in our Discord really gives you a frame of reference. And I love the one where it shows the, the cutoff thresholds, right? So the cutoff threshold for Legendary is 236 points as of this morning, 220 points for Epic. 168 for rare, 165 for uncommon. Um, I right now I'm sitting at 140th place, uh, but I don't remember what how many points that is off the top of my head. All I know is that I need at least one more top 50 day. I got one top 50 day the other day. I was able to secure that this season, and I'm I don't know if if, if anyone out there else is feeling it. The top 50 is not as intense as it was last season. There is only about 55 people competing for the top 50 spots. You know, it definitely seems like people are giving up. So I hope that the value of these amps are still going to be worth it. Yeah. When, when we I get also there. think, um, you know, a lot of people are going to be traveling from Miami. <laughs> Me too, bro. So, you know, either people are going to, forge while they're there or they're going to buy votes so i would say lock in if you are going to purchase any votes lock it in now uh so that well, you can and you're absolutely right sean like i'm going to miami and so my strategy and realization is that i may not be able to do all the voting and shit that i want to do when i'm there either i'm time limited hung over just not enough it's a time limited you know and so i got to do my pre-planning now to get there but it's been a it's been a fun other space pm guys i i think it's absolutely time to wrap up and thank everyone for hanging out and and appreciate yeah. all of you guys for spending all of uh this time with us this evening uh if you haven't already please like the video if you're new to other space fm please subscribe if you're already subscribed tell your friends your mom your mom's best friend tell them all to subscribe uh because we're looking to onboard everyone who's new <laughs> you know tell your mom's friend <laughs> i don't know <laughs> anyways it's been a beautiful evening we appreciate all of you guys uh we will be up for our next show on thursday twitter spaces 11 a.m pacific standard time that's where you'll catch us next if you're trying to catch me outside find me in miami uh sean i, I, I love you <laughs> have a great night oh, do you have any parting dear. words before we wrap <sighs> he's no. like no i don't know what you're saying anymore uh, <laughs> i appreciate everyone peace cheers everyone good night cheers